so flow collector is a component which collects flows and we have already discussed flows are different from events flow is a record which is taken from network devices an event is just about any log any activity which is stored in any of the assets now any of the assets could mean literally the printer the webcams the servers the endpoints anything then flow is only generated on the network devices right so as we have talked flow collector and event collector is the first thing that talks to your log sources or your assets so flow collector collects the flows packets could be s flow could be j flow could be q flow or it could be simply information from your nic network interface card which is in your laptop or your endpoint then that flow is sent to the event processor which could also be a flow processor because we have talked about this as well that event processor can flow around and then it can also take into consideration the flows and the events it can process both so one database which is attached to the event processor again as we have discussed into event processor this is for accumulations like if you want to run your reports for the last 5 days 10 days 12 days that information is accumulated separately based on source ips based on network uh, destination ips source code destination port username and some basic parameters which are common throughout any event the basic idea about accumulation how it is done is source ip destination ip username event id and these basic things which are common throughout any event which you take in it does not matter you take in antivirus event there would be a username you take in a firewall event there probably be a username if not there will be a source and destination ip so these are some of the common things which are always available in a average log so based on that there are accumulation flows and events both right so that is why in the database it's written flows events accumulation then it is sent to the console services this is the console part right there is a magistrate as as we have talked about magistrate acts as a separate event processor inside of console so they named it magistrate reporting is done on the console the ui is built on the console so this is a piece of information which i'm sharing qradar uses tomcat as its web server because it is yeah. work. so the last step would be the last database you know which is the post gri sql database which stores the identities the assets the offenses and the configuration okay so this is a high level architecture of the data store and everything and how flows and events are processed throughout this is basically complete qradar at a thousand feet view okay on your right you can just read it flow and event data is stored in arial whereas the configurations are stored into post sql a couple of details accumulation is required it will be accumulated in arial at a separate place it will not be mixed with the raw data that is stored into the arial database as soon as data is stored it cannot be changed i told you that for each minute there is one file so if you want to play with one event then you would have to delete a complete file for one minute then you lose lose all the data coming in from all the log sources for that minute data can be selectively indexed what is indexing now we'll talk about it indexing is basically how you index your book a book without indexed is just garbage data right there is data in continuation and you do not know what data is posted where imagine reading a book without an index it would be very difficult right if you have read 30 pages and the book is of 1000 pages 10 days 20 days later when you come back to that book you do not know or you do not remember till where you read but then if you have index it helps you go to the exact section okay the other use case could be you want to out of a book you do not know the complete data but you know the keywords that keyword will be put into index so you go to the index find the keyword and then you see it is posted on page number 100 or 200 or 400 you go to the page and then you read the complete data similarly indexing is like making pointers in the database through that it can go to the exact place where data for exact date and time is stored okay so this is what indexing is we'll we'll come to it there is a separate section on to it so we'll so the databases are done secure ssh communication between the appliances and this is how qradar looks at a thousand feet view right next high level architecture is done the flow collector right so flow is a record of conversation between two devices on the network again bear in mind that these are network devices and not any devices okay flow data packets are collected from variety of network devices and they can also be collected directly from the network interface which is your nic so we have talked about it right the collection is done and then it is sent to the aggregator the aggregator does the aggregation based on the protocol so that it's easier for qradar's event processor to look at a particular type of event okay? also the license limit is enforced this is the second box the third box then does the mapping application id is equal to event id what is an event id now now so conceptually speaking for a person who's qradar 
who's taking into consideration hundreds and thousands of events from different people and everybody is naming their events differently right it would be very difficult for curadar to process that event you know when it comes to correlation and curadar is seeing seeing 70000 or 60000 events per second and everybody is sort of giving their event ids so based on the event id it would be very difficult for curadar to correlate i'll put you an example so windows starts their events naming with say 1000 then goes above okay dlp starts their naming convention with 100 firewall starts their naming convention with 1000 and then there is a device which has their event id as abc 123 no? so hexadecimal mixture of abc and 12 so now curadar has no particular key on on the basis of which it can list the events what curadar did was they invented a qid which is a curadar identifier okay they say that now i want to create a key which can map to a particular event from a particular log source so that later on i only have to refer to the qid and not go to the particular event id or native event id of the log source how did it help me now i can give number from starting from 1 and going to 10 100000 now i just have to to take a look at one database of numbers which are consistent in form and then those numbers translate to the native event ids that is fine right this makes the computation a lot easier because now you have a consecutive line of event which have a consistency okay so similarly this this theory or this concept is applicable to events and in flows they assign an application id or app id so to each flow again each flow would have their different flow id or identifier depending upon their vendor s flow might have a different terminology j flow might have something different and then so on and so forth so the same idea is put here application id is map okay there we saw device support module here we see application detection mod- module right so you understand now that this is the parsing of the flow once that is done then super flows are created to save space so i've exemplified it yesterday as well if there are 10 connection to facebook.com at the same time curadar will sense that it will say hey i see 10 connection i think it's easier if i can just punch everything together make it one connection and then in the source i'll put all the 10 ips in the destination there is one anyway right so this is super flow and then uh, it is sent to event processor for further processing right so just understand that a collector as the first box which just cleanses the event right it cleanses the events beautifies it and makes it more easier for the event processor to understand okay that is the flow collector architecture so queue flow the last one that you see here queue flow is a offering by curada which provides layer 7 insight of course you understand that layer 7 is the application layer so it gives you more details about what application is running okay but then that has a condition that it cannot read into your events or flows rather if they are encrypted right so everybody who's from network security understand this that a firewall has the capability to decrypt the logs but it cannot decrypt it unless you, know, you provide the ssl keys right so it acts it then acts as a man in the middle and then decrypts it and sees whatever is inside the payload and all those things right so this is a similar concept the only difference is this is not a active measure so you cannot provide the ssl keys here to encrypt or decrypt the data okay so that is why it can only work in one mode which is the unencrypted mode fine so flow collector is done next up is event collector so conceptually almost same as flow collector but because events are so so many in in number compared to flows there is a separate traffic analysis box which is put here so it does log source restriction okay then let's start from the bottom log sources the assets which provide information to curadar collector they send their logs raw data packets are received by raw data packets mean whatever syslog you have configured on your device they are sending the logs to curadar that is raw data packet and as i said the collector does the cleaning the basic polishing right the beautification of the logs the standardization of the logs so that it's easier for the event processor to understand it okay the standardization is called as normalization so you can think it like that that every raw data packet is abnormal in size and shape and then it makes it normal or standard okay this is what the first thing that curadar does which is normalization or rather any sim this is same throughout any sim normalization is the first thing that any sim does the second is the parsing coalescing is something that curadar does other people might might not do both things are there so after that generically speaking once the parsing is done the next step is correlation 
which happens at the processor level. Yeah, normalization, first thing. Then parsing is the second thing. Third thing is the coalescing. Fourth thing is the correlation. And fifth thing is the storage. So just write it down, you know, these steps. So this is the event life cycle into QRadar. If anybody asks you or anybody wants to know how is the event propagated throughout the modules into QRadar from beginning to end, uh, this would be a complete answer that reception is the first thing that QRadar, of, of course, the reception would be the first thing. Second thing would be normalization. Third would be parsing. Fourth would be coalescing. And fifth would be uh, correlation. And sixth would be storage. So this is the event life cycle and this is the log collector and how does it proceed with the, with the work. So on your left, you see the pointers here. Each event collector gathers events from local and remote sources. EPS license is checked, first of all. Right. So you can also include licensing. If somebody is writing it down, uh, you can create one more point, which is licensing. Yeah, just include licensing, you know, in that list. If somebody is writing that down, just include licensing before normalization. Log sources are automatically discovered through traffic analysis or what they call log source detection module. Then they are normalized, classified into low and high categories. Then they are parsed and then they are coalesced depending upon if you have enabled it or not. And then they are shipped to event processor. Event processor is the next thing that we'll see here. Probably the most uh, complicated box or complicated structure here, right? So now we have the understanding that the logs are standardized and, and coalesced and everything. Now we'll jump to CRE, which is the custom rule engine. As I said, that's the heart of QRadar. This is where all the magic happens. So all the rules are stored here. The events would be run throughout all the rules. And if there is any positive match, it will send. It will be sent through the exit filter to magistrate. It will be an offense. Okay. Further, now you have generated the offense. Continuing to the event life cycle, it will be sent to storage. After correlation, it will be sent to storage. Where first, it will be stored into flows and events. A copy will be sent to accumulator. Well, it will be sent uh, saved differently into accumulation. And also, at the same time, it will be used for anomaly detection engine based on the rules, if you have enabled or not. The other part is the host profiler part. So host profile is a separate service. So all these services work in parallel, OK? Uh, QRadar is built over Java, right? So these are all threads that work concurrently or at the same time, right? So host profiler is one thread, accumulator is one thread, and exit filter is one thread. It reports to Magist, which is some other part of the code, right? So this is how it works on a very, very basic code, OK? And that is why one object or one event could be used to different things. Like it can also be stored. One copy can be sent to accumulator. Host profiler is also used. And then you know, some exit filter is also being used. So that is how it is doing things, right? Based on Java. So multi-threading is being used, right? So this is the event processor. Now I think it is very easy for you guys to understand. Yesterday, I think it was looking very complex and very hard. I think now you guys are very comfortable with it. Last but not the least, as I said, console. Same story happening here, console. Events are received, overflow license is checked in case you're all in one. Aerial proxy server, whose sole job is to connect to all the aerial query servers, which are on the event processor. If you have multiple, it will be up to proxy server's job to connect to all query servers and bring back you know, the results, which you have fired. Okay. So magistrate is where your UI lives as well. So magistrate will send out the query, which you have fired from the UI to aerial proxy server. It will then further send out the query to the uh, query server. Query server will extend the answer back to proxy server, and then in turn, it will be sent, sent to you. Uh, offenses are triggered from magistrate. So all the information related to the offense is sent from EP. Okay. All the AD information, anomaly detection engine information is also sent to the magistrate from where you see more and more offenses triggering. Right. And vulnerability information server is a local server based on QRID, which keeps track of the open ports, open services, vulnerabilities, which are attached to the assets so that you have more information about the asset. Let's say host profiler gave you some information about the asset. Let's say 192, 168, 1.2 is a computer. And then you ran a vulnerability considering or assuming you have QRadar vulnerability scanner. You ran a scan. Then it, it's up to the vulnerability information server 
to give that information to the same asset and tag it to the same asset that now you have more for visibility about 192 168 1.2 it has port 80 443 and 25 open and the services are ssh and uh, smtp and so on right this is the console for you which is the last part uh, this is where we end with the architecture